60 seconds. Yeah, I'm gonna need a uh, Gorge Out rectifier. Is your X not glowing? You look like you're having trouble hitting your X. The little thing? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was this thing right here. Isn't this it? I think. Mm, yeah, hi, Raul here. How many people do we have playing in this game today here, today now? Gotcha, one player. Go ahead and type in your name. Austrian porn. Oh, yeah. Hey, I need to know if you want to play a game with 21 questions or a game with seven questions. Huh? Oh, boy. Oh, for goodness sakes, Mavis. Seconds. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Brady. Very Brady. 20 seconds. Okay. Right, so there was Patty Duke, and then who played the other one? Your cousin. Uh, 20. Um, hey, when a question pops up, you got to buzz in. Then you pick your answer on the screen and hit the right number on the keyboard, all right? Follow me? It's real easy. 10 seconds. We'll see you later. Nine, water for that. Eight. That's right. Seven. Eight. All right. Six. Lose the desktop, Five. Please. Four. All right. Go three. Three. Limb whacker. Slims and trims by removing limbs. show i see you're playing by yourself tonight very interesting hey did you ever see that show friends yeah apparently not this is it just you i hope you appreciate this all right let's go all right i need a category and now climbing up the charts all the way to number one Let's have a big warm welcome for... And the award for Most Naturally Blonde goes to... I got $2,000, says you don't know this one. Okay, let's imagine that a new category is added to the Emmys for Best Blonde Actress. If the person who won the Most Naturally Blonde contest on her show were to present the first award, who would be the bearer of the envelope? Jan from The Brady Bunch, Laura from General Hospital, Kimberly from Different Strokes, or Blair from The Facts of Life? No, Kimberly would be presenting the award for TV actress with the best Playboy spread. Okay, now here's a good answer. Because she won the most naturally blonde contest at her school, Blair would be the first presenter. I'd like to thank my family, God, and the makers of Color Blast hair products. I mean, God, for giving me such beautiful hair. Thank you. Time to pick a category. For your viewing pleasure, I got something for you. You give me a right answer, I'll give you 3,000 bucks. Hey, do you remember that 1977 made-for-TV movie Something for Joey? What is that something for Joey? A puppy, his first kiss, the Heisman Trophy, or a drum set? Bad guess, bad guess. You want to see what the smart money says? Something for Joey is about Penn State running back John Capaletti, who gives his Heisman Trophy to his sick little brother. Yeah, I remember watching that with my older brother when I was little. He turned to me and he said, you know what, Schmitty? If I ever get rich and famous, I'm not giving you a damn thing. I hate him. Category, please. We're losing him, Doctor. Count. One, two, three. Uh, never mind. This one's called Beauty is Only Screen Deep. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Okay, you know all about the ugly duckling that turns into a swan, right? If the fairy tale, The Ugly Duckling, ended the same way the Ugly Duckling TV movie The Girl Most Likely To does, what would you see? Ugly Duckling has beak enlargement. Ugly Duckling turns into swan, kills ducks. Ugly Duckling ends own pathetic life in pond, or Ugly Duckling teaches birds value of beauty. The Girl Most Likely To is the greatest made-for-TV movie about a not-so-attractive girl who becomes beautiful and kicks the living crap out of everyone who ever tormented her. <laughs> I think there's a very valuable lesson to be learned here. Beautiful people are dangerous and should be taken out with firearms. All right, pick a category. Spotless window, shining floor, do it all with numbers. 
All right, give it up for a glowing review. 1,000 bucks if you get it. Okay, imagine this. Due to a hostile corporate takeover, Agent April Dancer, the girl from UNCLE, has become the girl from GLOW. Which outfit would be most appropriate for her first day on the new job? Water skis in a swimsuit, gold lame wrestling tights, chaps and cowboy boots, or a patent leather teddy and a whip? GLOW stands for the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. It's a female pro wrestling league. So now if she loses her wrestling match, they can call her the girl who cried UNCLE. Throw me a category. Uh-oh, fresh slut tits eyesore. It is time for a Let's see if you can make some sense out of this gibberish category. Buy my new and improved bathroom cleaner. What do you say to 5,000 bucks to start this gibberish question off? Okay, you're gonna have about 30 seconds to solve this thing, but every second and a half, I'm gonna take some of that cash back. Okay, take a look at this and tell me with what famous TV phrase does it rhyme? It's Rowdy Booty Grime. All right, type the answer and hit return. <laughs> nice job. You really know your duty. Give me a category. Tonight's topic, six in the workplace. We're calling this one IP Freely. How does $2,000 sound? All right, what's with the crank phone calls? Somebody keeps calling here wanting to talk to Hugh Jass. My name is Josh Schmitzenstein, not Hugh Jass. Anyway, instead of Prince Albert in a can, imagine a crank caller asks for Frank Pembleton in the box. To where should this call be directed? The police office from Homicide, the jailhouse on the Andy Griffith Show, the stage of That's Incredible, or the Ed Sullivan Theater. Detective Frank Pembleton can be found interrogating suspects in the box on Homicide. <laughs> so, they better let Frank out because I hear his refrigerator is running. Go, oh, wait, no, oh, darn it. Always miss that up. Category, please. Question seven is dedicated to the men and women of trivia. Here we have Saturday Night's All Right for Flippin' Channels. We're playing for $3,000 this time. All right, we all know about a little show called Saturday Night Live, right? But I wonder if you could tell me which of these Saturday Night shows was never on the air. Saturday Night Trivia Quiz, Saturday Night Live with Howard Cosell, Saturday Night with Connie Chung, or Saturday Night Dance Party. Shouldn't have done that. What do you say we check out the right answer? Never been a show called Saturday Night Trivia Quiz. I mean, come on, what kind of loser has time to sit around staring at a screen answering useless, unimportant questions? Let's move on. All right, I need a category. Join us as we explore the fascinating world of eight. May I introduce a horse isn't always a horse, of course. You're looking at $3,000 on this one. All right, quit your horsing around and listen up. Suppose Mr. Red had it out to find himself a new companion. If Mr. Red tried to find Mare's Leg from Wanted, Dead or Alive, which of these sounds might you hear? Sound one, sound two, sound three, or sound four. And again, sound one, sound two, Sound three, or sound four? <sighs> Steve McQueen's character, Josh Randall, from Wanted, Dead or Alive, calls his gun, Mare's Leg. <laughs> well, looks like they won't be putting Mr. Ed out to stud. Yep. Time to pick a category. The category, anagrams. You get this one right, you get 3,000 greenbacks. And now, your question. Which of the following phrases is not an anagram created from the letters found in the name of that enigmatic Brady housekeeper, Alice Nelson? And because I know you love a challenge, saline clone, nose cleaner, cleanse loin, or linen solace. Try as you might, you ain't gonna make the phrase nose cleaner out of Alice Nelson.
Of course, there was that episode where Cindy got the sniffles and got snots all over Alice's apron. Okay, I made that up. Throw me a category. The following is a test of question 10. This is only a test. For your enjoyment, call your cable company and say hi. Get this one right, you get a grand. Oh, uh, do you remember MTV's olden days before Jenny McCarthy? Remember those trademark funky graphics they had? Because of the image used in MTV's original promos, who would be a good choice for a guest VJ for an anniversary celebration? Astronaut Neil Armstrong, President Ronald Reagan, Surgeon General C. Everett Koop, or mass murderer Charles Manson? MTV's original logo was a flashing neon-colored picture of the 1969 moon landing. That's one small step for network. That's a network, Neil. Oh, darn it. Now, if this were a TV show, this is where you get up and use the bathroom. But I'm in kind of a hurry, so let's move right into round two. Don't forget, everything in round two is worth double, so heads up. All right, pick a category. Let's take a look at six million dollars plus foreign grosses. You get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Let's see how you handle this one. Say the actress playing Steve Austin and Jamie Summers' bionic friend in The Bionic Showdown were bionic in an action flick in which she starred. What might we see? Jordan doing 600 push-ups in G.I. Jane. Ripley punching out an alien in Alien. Lorna stopping bullets in Lethal Weapon 3. Or Annie outrunning the bus in Speed. The woman who played Kate, the bionic cohort of Steve Austin and Jamie Summers in the bionic showdown, was Sandra Bullock, who played Annie in Speed and, um, <clears throat> Speed 2. <laughs> so, when Dennis Hopper puts the bomb on Sandra Bullock, does that mean she'd have to keep running faster than 55 miles per hour? Hey, look! A quarter! Give me a category. And our special guest tonight, Free the Puppets! 4K coming your way for a right answer. All right, listen up. In our world, there are only two kinds of beings, humans and puppets. Which side are you really on? Say you're a special agent hired to track down and exterminate puppets hiding out in the human world. On the set of which show would you not find any puppets? Unhappily Ever After, Soap, Alf, or Third Rock from the Sun. Uh, how about Bob and Chuck Campbell? One of them was a dummy. You should be familiar with that. The correct answer is... Third Rock from the Sun has no puppets. But, ah, what the hell. They're close enough. Alright, I need a category. Flash! We interrupt this game to bring you a special question. Let's see what we got going. Take a deep breath before picking this question. I'll give you 4,000 clams for this bad boy. You know, some people have been telling me I should get into commercials. I've been uh, practicing some skills, and, well, let me run this by you, see what you think. Hi, my name is Schmitty. I make a great spokesperson for your product. I do absolutely, positively anything for cash. Hell, check out the gig I got now. Besides, you never get to see my face here. And let me tell you, I'm nothing to sneeze at. A lot of people tell me I'm quite a hell of a looker. If you must know the truth, and I know somebody could use me to sell jeans or cologne or whatever my agent can swing my way. Wow! Based on their past ad campaign, who would most likely hire me? Oh my god. Isuzu, Smith Barney, Snapple, or Federal Express? Oh, I'm sweating. Back in the 80s, FedEx did a bunch of extremely popular ads featuring an actor who could speak 450 words a minute. <laughs> that guy must have had a very fast tongue and a lot of girlfriends. Category, please. I remember growing up on the mountain and sharing my bedroom with 14. The category is Carol Brady and her last crusade. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Oh no, Mike and Carol Brady's personalized towels are gone. Naturally, Carol is furious. Carol vows never to rest until she replaces the towels. Years later, she's arrested for breaking into an 80s sitcom family's home to steal the kids' Mike and Carol towels. Which 80s sitcom is it? Kate and Allie, Growing Pains, The Wonder Years, or Family Ties? Those two kids on Growing Pains are also named Mike and Carol. 
This week on a very special episode of Growing Pains, Jason Seaver slaps Carol Brady silly. Aggravated assault or justice? You be the judge tonight. Time to pick a category. Hey, smart move, my friend. You just got your hands on a dis or dat. This dis or dat's category name is Bang the Gong Got It On. Now, I'm going to list off seven TV couples, and for each one, I want you to tell me if they boink, i.e. had sex, or didn't boink. You know, didn't have sex. As you see each one, if they did the nasty, press one. If they did not stuff the muffin, press two. And if you want to skip one, press four. It's easy, a thousand bucks for each correct answer, and a thousand is taken away for each incorrect answer, and of course, any you don't get to. All right, I'm gonna start you off with 30 seconds on the clock. Let the games begin. Dave and Maddie from Moonlight. Lois and Clark. Mary and Lou from Mary Tyler Moore. Sam and Diane on Cheers. Jerry and Elaine on Seinfeld. Joel and Maggie on Northern Exposure. Last one, Oscar and Felix on the Os Ain't got no more. Yeah, way to go, Professor. Let's see your new score. Well, now that don't suck, do it. Give me a category. Well, what do we have here? She is woman, hear her siren. You get this one, you pocket 2,000 bucks. One question coming right up. Suppose policewoman began teaching self-defense courses. Based on her nickname, what would be most appropriate for her to encourage her students to use? A throwing star, a slim gym, a billy club, or pepper spray? Policewoman Angie Dickinson is nicknamed Pepper. And yes, she is that hot. Yeah, handcuff me to your fender, baby. All right, pick a category. Thank you. Good, Good night, night Thank you. God Thank bless. you. You're beautiful. Today's specialties include all my wives. How does $4,000 grab you? Heads up, here it comes. Say the folks from Melrose Place are on the game show to tell the truth. When asked, will the real Mrs. Mancini please stand up, which of these Melrose women will not rise? Sydney, Amanda, Kimberly, or Jane? No, shortly after trying to kill Michael by running him over, Kimberly decided to marry him. I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. Although they did sleep together for a brief period, Michael never married Amanda. And you know why? Because she's saving herself for me. Yeah, it's a curse I gotta live with. Throw me a category. You know what, you're playing great. I'll, I'll stop bugging you now. Uh, you know what, actually, just one more question. Question 18. Open wide and get ready for... Watch where you swing that pickaxe. If you know this one, you're getting 4,000 bucks. Hey, kids, it's Howdy Duty time. Say you're mining for gold, but you accidentally strike the hosts of solid gold with your pickaxe instead. What kind of jewelry will you not be able to make? A 24 karat Rick D's ring, a 24 karat Marilyn McCoo necklace, a 24 karat Adrian's Med watch, or a pair of 24 karat Dionne Warwick earrings. Adrian's Med never hosted solid gold. But be careful, that watch could give you dance fever or a migraines medic. Time to pick a category. Minty cool, minty fresh 19. Shake hands with, who's the bonehead that picked this? 4K coming your way for a right answer. Okay, we all know that the original Captain Kangaroo's real name is Bob Keeshan. Based on Keeshan's previous kids show experience, what might the producers of Captain Kangaroo have said when explaining their choice for lead actor? Some clowns playing the captain. We just hope that rat will work out. The cowboy better rope in the viewers. Or, yep, we gave the part to that wiener. Before he was promoted to captain, he was Clarabelle, the silent clown on Howdy Doody. <laughs> and when asked about Mr. Moose, the producers responded, We felt we needed a character with balls. <laughs> All right, I need a category. Question 20 now concludes its broadcast day. 
coming at you. The yellow brick road is under construction. I'll give you 4,000 clams for this bad boy. Pencils ready. Let's do it. If the lion from The Wizard of Oz were to come to TV to find courage, in which of the following places would he most likely find it? The hotel on Have Gun Will Travel, the ranch on Bonanza, the winery on Falcon Crest, or the fort on F Troop? No, the lion would head to the Bonanza Ranch for a good old steak. You know, as long as he's not afraid of the cows. Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. The name of the fort on F Troop is Fort Courage. Problem is, once he gets there, they'll probably treat him like crap anyway. Something I heard about strays in the military, I don't know. Category, please. Welcome. Always in a hurry. I bet you're a joy to hang out with. Here's your clue. Cram it, clown. Now put on a happy face and get ready to jack. Everybody, lovely work as usual. Raul Hun, what's going on now? Hey there, player. Congratulations on making the high scoreboard. Some people like to call it the high scoreboard. I prefer to call it the scoreboard, which is high. It's all semantics. If you like to play again, let me know. Story designed to make working mother feel guilty tonight. This week on Zenora, Queen of Battle, Zenora and Janelle are trapped. The rock slide covered the entrance to the cave. We'll have to find a way to keep warm until morning. And supplies are running low. Oh no, the torch went out. We'll just have to grope around in the dark. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh. All on the next Zenora. This week on The Real Holy World, Jesus and Muhammad face further problems as they adjust to being roommates. Man, look at these dishes everywhere. How many last suppers is this guy going to have? Jesus Christ. They face the same difficulties that all roommates face. Muhammad, why didn't you tell me that the Pope called? Oh, sorry, man. Uh, I was on the other line with Cat Stevens and I forgot to leave you a message. And there always seems to be another problem around the corner. I really wish you wouldn't play those Judas Priest albums. Yeah, why? So we can listen to your Striper albums instead? Before they can bring peace to the world, they first have to to bring peace to their two-bedroom apartment. After all, Muhammad, if we can be friends, then can't the whole world... Friends? Yeah, we'll be friends when you stop ordering pork sausage on the pizza. The Real Holy World, Tuesdays at 8, right after Liquid Diet Television. This is not a glorious war. This is a war of brother against brother, original against spin-off, Simon against Simon, Nancy McKeon against Philip. Obstacle courses are all hell. The Civil War Battles of the Network Stars. A Ken Burns film coming this fall to PBS. 
Liquor. Don't drink that. Why? Mine. Oh. This message brought to you by the United States Department of Condescending Paternalism. If you thought taking it in the nuts America and taking it in the nuts Europe was funny, well just wait for taking it in the nuts Japan. An hour's worth of hilarious home videos from Japan where every blooper involves a Japanese male getting banged in the balls. Mommy. That's Sunday night at 7 for multicultural comedy at its best. Ooh, that had to hurt. Taking it in the nuts. One's a cop from the future. One's a witch doctor from the past. Together they fight crime. Freeze! Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ting, ting, walla, walla, bang, bang. Sundays on UBC. How often do you think about the air you breathe? Oxygen, gas of life, or secret military death vapor? Tonight. Ice. Watch out. Why? Slippery. Oh. This message brought to you by the United States Department of Condescending Paternalism. Tonight on Jack TV. Watch what happens when your sweet, sweet slumber plays host to some of America's scariest dreams. I had the most awful nightmare. Real life recollections of vivid bad dreams. I tried to run but kept falling and my legs wouldn't move. When the laws of nature don't apply. Then it like turned into this weird kind of like pit bull cat thing. And the mechanized world fails you. I kept turning the key and the car just wouldn't start and I was so late to work. And there's no place to hide. I had to go on stage and I didn't know any of my lines and I was new. Would you wake up in time? America's scariest dream. Find out.